Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 592. And the topic today may look a little confusing, but I'll explain as I go through. Um, I think I put something like, and I totally just threw this up there. So what I was said was something like uh, six foot two, within 10 miles. Um, there was something else I put in there as well. Oh, 45 to 50. Colon or semicolon dating apps, what the F. I'll explain all of that. <laughs> it will make sense. I was trying to come up with a, a catchy title. I don't think I did a very good job of it, but I'll get to the explanation in a moment. So to start, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in life, love, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which inspired these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. I started these over two years ago, and they've been week, they've been daily for most of that time now. That's why it's number 591 today. No, 592 today, excuse me. And the topic today is a little bit... Um, <laughs> I'm going to have some fun today. Because I am basically talking about one of my pet peeves. And that's the dating apps. Yes, going to have a go at those. Um, I talked yesterday about... Um, the, um, I'm trying to work out what the title was. I was talking about this 50 year old French guy who was saying he wouldn't date anybody who's older than 25 years old. I did get into some stuff about that one. But in the meantime, as I was talking about that, I mentioned this the thing about dating apps that they don't really treat data about people effectively because what they're doing in dating apps primarily and, and, and some dating sites is 90% of the time they're using, date, they're using um, what they call basically demographic, demographic information, age, height, location, stuff like that. Versus what really comes to the um, the fore, what's needed in a relationship is connection, compatibility, personality styles, that sort of thing. You know, yes, it's nice to know that the person you were dating has a full time job, and also nice to know that they're going to be the right height for you. But that doesn't really limit the perspective very much, and it certainly doesn't create what I would suggest as a strong attraction between people, which is why. A lot of people go on these dating apps and don't get much fun, or luck, excuse me, fun, <laughs> much luck in their process because what they're doing is just going through date after date after date from people, trying to find someone they got some sort of level of chemistry with. I have some solutions in mind, I'll get to those in a moment. Well, I'm going to get to that. Gina, Gina jumping ahead, and I see you, Gina, in my broadcast. <laughs> Literally, as, you, as that came up on my screen, I was just saying, I have some suggestions about that, which I'll get to. I'm gonna, I want to belabor the point a bit more before I get <laughs> there, just to hit a, hit a um, hit the nail on the head enough times that it goes buried into the tabletop. Um, it amazes me that people will go through a dating app and find someone prospective. Hurry up. Thank you, Gina. You know that these talks take a little bit of time. <laughs> It's usually 10, 15 minutes. Oh, sidebar. If you watch this on YouTube wondering who I'm talking to, I do this on Facebook Live first. And so I'm talking to a friend of mine, Gina, who happens to be interacting with me on screen, which you won't see on YouTube. My apologies. That's why I'm going to sort of have to sort of um, explain what she's saying and or just ignore it <laughs> in terms of verbalizing it. So, um, so what amazes me is that with these dating apps and sites is people, because I'm going to use both sides of the conversation here, not just one, put all their agenda into putting together one, a profile of what they think represents them most effectively, which nine times out of 10, it doesn't, just to be honest. Secondly, they go searching through their desired preference um, data catalog of people who fit in the criteria they put in there. And to be honest, most of these dating apps, dating sites, only put a few things up there, like what is the height range you're looking for, the age range, uh, maybe the, the, the body shape, that was one of the apps that has, has that on it. Uh, geographic location, um, what their religious affiliations are, and maybe they smoke, drink, or do drugs. That's pretty much it. If that's your criteria for finding a date, good luck with that, because you're going to be sorting through a hell of a lot of people to find someone who might be compatible. What's also frustrating, <laughs> and this piece I've got to drop in here as well, is that many people don't tell the truth, both in their dating profiles and in their meeting with people. It's kind of a unfortunate side effect of people not being willing to trust themselves and trust that they'll be liked for who they are. And also, there are people out there who are in it to manipulate and don't really want to reveal themselves because if they did tell the truth, they know they wouldn't get any love because they self-identify as psychopaths or sociopaths or some other extreme psychological dysfunction. 
which is why a lot of people I know go through challenging relationships with people who are dysfunctional because they don't know how to sort for that. So, okay, I can't resist any longer. I've got to talk about this. So, Gina, since you inspired me and nudged me and pushed me through to say this, what I suggest in, in, instead is, well, actually, I'm going to come up with some, I've got to come up with some ideas. I have a few things brewing on this, but what I really feel is that the biggest challenge people, sorry, the biggest assumption people make is that by having a little app on your phone that you can swipe through people, you're going to find the love of your life. And it ain't going to happen. The true... <laughs> Thank you, Gina. Thank God, she says. <laughs> yes, I'm getting to the point now. I know you've been holding out for it for so long. It's been, what, four minutes? <laughs> you're so impatient, Gina. Um, <laughs> actually, I want to talk to you offline because I want to find out about how the cats are doing. But I'll get to that in a moment. That's not to do with this broadcast. Um, so... What people tend to do is put all their investment into just having a quick swipe on an app and then meet the love of their life. Now, yes, there are stories out there of one in a thousand, one in a million, whatever it is, that they are married to the love of their life because they met them on a dating app. It does happen, but way not that frequently, or way infrequently better off than that. And that, for me, is one of the things that makes this so challenging. It's it's it's. So it's fishing in a bigger pond, but it isn't a way because what happens is when you're date when you're using this dating criteria, which is such a um, loose and ineffective way of sorting, that to meet somebody through dating it was very challenging. And it's the apps that are, are probably at fault more than anything else because they don't interview people. If you've been on a dating app, you know that the signing up for a dating app requires what an email address, a name, a couple of pictures, and some information, which is extremely. Um, it's a very thin. It's like a cover sheet on a book. It's not enough information to give you what the book's about, just to give you the title. And that's kind of what it is. So the question is, how do you meet someone and get to know who they are as a book versus just the title page, the cover page, to use that analogy in another way? And frankly, my suggestion is going to sound very mundane, which is meeting people in real life. And I mean that in that you need to go to places where you might meet somebody. Because the thing about it is, I've talked about this before, and it's actually in my book, uh, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, by the way. I'll put a plug in the link in the, in the comments for that that talks about, you know, if you want to find someone you want to be compatible with, go and do things that you love doing that fill you up. For example, if you're someone who loves animals, go go volunteer at an animal, not volunteer, but go visit at some animal shelters or go and play with the wolves at one of the sanctuaries. And by so doing, you might meet somebody else there by coincidence who happens to like the same hobbies. I'm not saying they do, but they might. And my point about this is that you've got to be out living life. And the challenge is for a lot of people is they're not willing to go out and play in life fully. They want to sit at home or in the bar and have an app and swipe on the app trying to find somebody they can meet with, mate with. I was going to say meet with when it's a mate with. Same thing. And for me, that it's a, it's a really, um, yeah, Gina, as I said, it is a low bar. And there's the thing is you've got to raise the standards. If you want to have a healthy relationship, you've got to invest your energy, your time, and sometimes your money to meet the right people. And by the way, Gina's one of my friends who's a matchmaker who does this real life stuff. She finds people that pair up that way. So if you if you want to go that way, that's another option I recommend because it's better than a dating app, which is absolutely, well, it's, it's machine-based learning. That isn't the very way of finding love. I'm sorry, because it's just number crunching. Whereas with a matchmaker like Gina and other people I know who do this sort of work, some of them, not all of them, but some like Gina are much more in-depth and do a lot more work with people finding compatibility. But if you don't do that, at least do your own work out in the world. Um, for me personally, I spend a lot of my time doing things where I love being around my spiritual community. I'm not saying I'm hunting there to find someone to be with, and hunting is the term I use intentionally, but it means that I might meet somebody there who at least we have a common ground. If I meet somebody who is like that, or if I go to different workshops and seminars, because I've been in the seminar workshop in arena, say industry, for over 30 years. That's where my passion lies in a lot of the work I do, and where I learn and where I teach. So meeting somebody in that arena is much more aligned to my values there. And yes, then you can go through the other criteria because when you meet somebody, you pretty much know, are they the right weight for me, the right height for me, the right look for me? Well, yes, yes, exactly, Gina. Of course I am. <laughs> you know me too well. Um, and so the thing is, what I'm trying to make the point about this is that the dating apps themselves don't invest too heavily your, and I don't mean financially, I mean don't invest your time and your heart too heavily into dating apps. Because as frankly, as, as far as I'm concerned, they are a low, they are, it is like low-hanging fruit but it's also a low um, return investment. So don't invest too much. If you want to play in them, that's fine. 
But I recommend more effectively, you get out in the world and explore and do things that you love doing. Which, which and then I'm talking about this in terms of where you love to play and fills your heart. Because one, you might meet somebody of common values there. But secondly, you're actually more attractive when you're doing things you love. And that's one of the secrets, by the way, for women especially, is when you do things that you love, you shine more brightly, which makes you more noticeable to the men you're looking to meet. That's a PS, or as a as a bonus. <laughs> So the point we're going to get back to is simply this. If you're looking for love, well, as I've said in my other talks, if you're looking for love in all the wrong places, I can help you with that. <laughs> but for women especially, um, this searching methodology, as I said before, is actually inaccurate because it puts you in the masculine when you do that. And really when you're searching that way, you're coming from a lack place, which isn't the way to do it. I've talked about this many times before, so I'm going to summarize it briefly here, is that ladies, when you're looking for love, you start inside. You start by loving yourself, filling yourself up first, and you start learning how to attract what you want because ladies, your power, as I said many times before, is the ability to attract what you want in relationships. You don't go out hunting, pursuing men. That puts you in your masculine, which basically belittles the men and cuts their balls off. I've been on the other, receiving end of that and I know what it feels like. It ain't fun. So it comes back to honoring, respecting, loving yourself. And I guess I'll put some links in the comments for my self-love practice and my Attract the Man You Want program just because I'm talking about it right here. And basically take the time to get truly clear about what you want, who you are, and what you really deserve in your life. Because for most people who go on dating apps, by the way, they don't spend much time making a list on, separate from that, on, with pen and paper even, to go, what am I looking for in a relationship? What do I really want in partnership? If you do that first, that'll actually set up your vision a bit better, which might move you forward the right place. Right way, excuse me. And that's the thing that most people don't do. They're busy searching before you know what they're looking for. Kind of backwards, you know? So again, I don't recommend dating apps from the point of view of putting your heart and soul into making that happen. But I do recommend starting with what's inside, what you truly value, what you respect, what you want in life and love. So you can have what you really want. And then finding a way to get there with human interaction and human guidance. Much more effective. Um, I just ran out of steam for a second. There was anything else in that one. But this is the thing is that we forget to do. And yes, back in the old days, we would be meeting people in person through inter inter introductions, blind dates, social engagements, parties, fundraisers, networking events. I remember back in the day, back in the day, like two years ago, <laughs> you know, meetup became the hotbed of, pl of places to go. Thank you, Lisa. I'm glad you liked it. Um, and yes, it does. Matter. I hope it makes sense. Thank you for confirming that. Um, it wasn't that long ago. I mean, literally, I think it was only about two or three years ago when meetup, which was the big hot trend. People go to meetup events to meet people. So there'd be meetup groups for dancing, like for line dancing or for salsa, or there'd be or meetup groups for people who love cars. Those, event, those gatherings were places where you could meet socially to actually get dates. But that faded as soon as the dating apps came out. So maybe it's time to re rebuild the meetup social engagement, because meetups a lot lately have become much more business centered, at least the ones I've been noticing in my inbox. But having meetup groups for socially single, free people to meet up can be a great place to meet somebody. So again, in person, we can evaluate and learn things. It still is, Gina. see, I wasn't sure, so thank you for that, it still is. I had thought that, that some of those, well, maybe the meeting groups I'm being invited to are the ones I get in my inbox from the app, from the site, are more business-centric. I mean, to change my criteria. But yes, so having a path to meet people socially and in person through friends is also good too. Of course, the challenge with that is, <laughs> happened to me before, is when your friends say, I've got a perfect, perfect match for you, and they introduce you to their friend, and you're going, I don't think you know me that well. <laughs> That's happened to me before. So a lot of these guys are kind of lonely hearts to meet in the meetup group people. That's, that's the challenge, unfortunately. There is, um, well, I mean, even going to the clubs and stuff, a lot of men are hanging out because they're lonely themselves. So. I'm not sure there's a cure for that by th through the meetup group, but at least finding places, and this is the thing, by the way, is you may have to test drive a few different ways of doing this to find the right one that fits for you and the right place to meet people. So yes, a lot of those guys are kind of lonely hearts. I, I know, it's true. Women who go are a mixed bag. Sorry, women women who go are a mixed bag. The guys, hmm, hmm what was that? I'm not sure what you said that, that, that. There was a missing period or something in that statement. But So thank you, Gina, for what that was. <laughs> um, so, I think I got my point. I'm not a big fan of the dating app, the dating apps, as you probably have heard before in my other broadcasts. Um, I will put links in the comments for how I can help you. Um, 
And I want to make sure you get this point again, is that really it comes down to, first of all, filling yourself up first, loving who you are, so you're not coming from a place of lonely heart or desperation, and then being out in the world and meeting people that can honor you and respect you where you are. Because the thing is, if you don't respect yourself, they won't respect you. That's a whole other teaching I just dropped in there, by the way. So with that, I think I've got to the bottom line of this point. Um, I would invite you to watch yesterday's broadcast, by the way, because that was a really, temp really, t really deep one about the whole misalignment stuff. Um, so Gina, what was that? There's, whoops, there's good women, there's good women who go, there's not good women, hang on. There's good, there's good women who go, there's not good women who go, but a lot of these guys have to go to this, the go to the stuff in the real world events are kind of not the kind of guys women like. I think I make this, you got the sort of punctuation like, what did you say that? So I think I got your point. So basically saying is that uh, there are good women that go to these events and bad and not so good women that go to these events, but the guys that, that go to these events are not the kind of guys these women want to meet. That's true. There are, that's where you got to sort clearly. You got to do some practice. You got to do some, some test runs and and take the time to go to. Um, I can say this. Take the time to go to different places to explore. You might find you go to one event, it sucks. Go to another event, it's different. Just on a totally different level for a second. I have friends of mine who have been in the twelve step process and have found that they went to one twelve step meeting that sucked. Went to another one that really aligned for them. So so yeah. So there is a definite. Um, shift that you need to be willing to try new things that's the thing is if you go out and this is the other thing if you go out once to like a meetup group and it sucks and you stay home and say I'm not going to go out again that's a ridiculous viewpoint if you want to go out and try a different one explore try some new things out that's a good thing to do so my viewpoint is really about take your dating life by the reins and actually take some conscious action to go meet people again ladies don't do the hunting be willing to be noticed and be courted that's a whole, there's about three other topics I just dropped in there as well. So with that, I think I've <laughs> spoken about that enough. Um, attempt to answer Gina's questions. Thank you, Gina, for being so interactive to my broadcast tonight. Um, I wish you well. I, did, I, I just, well, sorry, replays. I will put links in, links in the comments as I mentioned. Replays will be on my business Facebook business page, on YouTube, and on my podcast. I'll give you the links so you can find those. Um, and by the way, for my friends in LA, please stay dry and safe. It's been raining all day today, pretty much. Um, and it looks like it might be causing some more challenges up in Malibu where the, where the fire damage was recently. So please stay safe. Um, so replays. First of all, um, on my business page, all my, let me back up and start again on that one. I do my Facebook Lives on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook, on facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. You can watch the replays on my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. That was right. Um, I also put them onto my YouTube channel, which I feel free to invite. I, I invite you to feel free to um, willing to be called. Yes, that's a whole other conversation, Lisa. I've got to talk about that somewhere. But yes, ladies, your ladies' strength is in the willingness to receive with. Um, what's the word looking for? Willing to receive with. Um, I would say filtering. There's another word I didn't come through. But basically, yes, willing to be called, but from a place of being. Um, men have to earn your respect that's what I was going to say so that's what's going to respond to that one so when they court you they can't just recruit you because they think like you can do it they have to earn that level with you anyway that's a different topic I've done that before I might do one I might do it tomorrow we'll see so back to replay reminders Fa uh, YouTube on on my YouTube channel which is Barry Selby Facebook dot, sorry YouTube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby you can find me there please subscribe I think that was the link. I have to double check, make sure I was right. Um, in there is a playlist called Messages for the Masculine, where all of these 590 plus broadcasts live. You can watch them there in any sequence you want. And also my podcast, which is on iTunes called Messages from the Masculine. Subscribe to that. And you download the audio versions of my talks. Um, I think that's it. So if you haven't caught this broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live on my personal page. Feel free to watch and catch up another time when I do that live. Maybe we'll do the courtship one again. You got me some ideas there, Lisa. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, you've got some things to think about, I trust. And again, I'll put the links in the comments, what I shared. And please take care of yourselves. With that, I'll see you again tomorrow.